Shalom. Shalom. How are you guys doing? You guys doing all right? It's a beautiful day today. Still gets to the high 90s, 98, 95. But we don't get no 114s no more. And it's starting to get cold in the night, like 52. But so it's pretty straight. You guys doing all right? I'm doing all right. Thank the Almighty for Zooms last night. We're able to um, talk about some things come from the heart, uh, not hold stuff in. Hopefully, you know. Uh, sometimes, you know, the worst part of growth is when individuals hold things in and they hold back punches. It's better not to hold back punches because. That way the other, the respondent or the receiver could deal with the situation accordingly, you know? Like um, back in the day with um, um, Mrs. She was like, oh, I don't really say nothing because it's not going to change. Oh, you know, I'm tired of saying the same thing. You know, they'll use that reasoning, I will assume. But if you don't tell people, then you harbor it in and it turns into resentment. So, it's better to just tell people how you really think or how you really feel. If you cut ties with people, you cut ties with people. If you don't, you don't. If you grow, you grow. Sometimes the best growing is through uh, chastisement. Sometimes the best growing is through disagreements. Sometimes uh, one of my buddies, uh, we weren't buddies at first, but I fought him. Me and him fought. And after that, we became pretty close friends. You know, respect was drawn. But it took that situation. If we've never fought, we would have never been friends. I'm not saying that's how the average relationship should be. Where you, All my friends are people I fought. No, I'm not saying that. But um, sometimes growth comes through conflict. Uh, you will not put on size in the gym without conflict, without stressing the muscle, without putting your body under stress. And there's some um, relationships. There's times in people's relationships mainly a marriage that the true growth comes when you guys are at odds because the husband tells you hey i don't like this 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 and this and this and she'll be like i don't like this 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 and this and you come and you meet in the middle all right well i don't get it i get 60 percent of what i want you get 60 percent of what you want we don't get everything that we want but we meet in the middle and and then after that then you have this level of respect or teamwork or cohesiveness, you know? And so I thank the Almighty because it says we're part of the body of Amashiach. Regardless, if we get in disagreements or whatnot, we're on the same basketball team. And we, our goal is to win the championship. Our goal is to make it into eternal life. So if you look at um, people that talked about Michael Jordan, there's a lot of people that did not like Michael Jordan as a person. He was a great player, but they said his temperament was off. Uh, many a times they got in arguments with Michael Jordan uh, during practice, wherever, right? There's times, but their goal was still to win the game. They still had to work as a team. And I learned this, this kind of helped me in my marriage and whatnot and dealing with people is Every day I work on the, I'm on the job, especially construction. And there's always that, like that one guy that gets on your nerves. Or they're real passive aggressive, or they say like a little slight racist joke, and ha ha ha, or or you know, or or they make like a, just a little comment where you could tell like not enough to where you want to like, hey, let's meet after work, but just enough to let them know. And I, I they're usually cowards because passive aggressiveness is like, um, is is the tool of a coward. Because they will never tell you how they really feel. They're not uh, man enough or woman enough to tell you how they really feel about you. 
So they'll just be like, uh, ha, 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 or, or they'll go back and gossip on you. Instead of telling you, they'll just gossip and tell how piece of trash you are or whatever, right? They're, they're cowards. That's the, that's the tool of a coward is passive aggressive, right? So you're working on these people. You're working on this job, and there's like that one guy that gets on your nerves or whatever, right? But you still need to work with them. Sometimes I'm partner with the guy. And regardless if, if he's a piece of trash, hey, that cut, what measurement you need? All right, cool. Are we going to hang it over here or this? All right, I need you to do this, this, and this. Sometimes I'm working with apprentices that I cannot stand. And no other journeyman wants them. So they send them to me. and be like, hey, man, after you, we're just going to lay them off. And I got to deal with this dude for like two weeks. And well, I don't want to put on my heart. And they're little apprentice, little punk, little 22-year-old kids, right? And they have a little, like, they know it all, whatever, right? And you still got to work. Hey, I need you to lay out this area, hang this duct this way. I need it at this elevation. After you do that, we need to go get the material here. And we got a crane lift tomorrow, whatever, right? You still got to work because the goal is to finish the job. And I thank the Almighty for Zooms yesterday because our goal is to make it into the kingdom. That's the thing we have in common. We may have temperaments, introverts, extroverts, whatever, verts, right? You know what I'm saying? But... Some people more outspoken, some people not reserved, whatever, right? Different tactics, different upbringings, different parents, whatever. But our goal is to make it into the kingdom. Our goal is to be saved. And we need to work through things. Uh, that's the one thing I did not like. Or the main two things I don't like with Christian churches is one, that the pastor had all power. Uh, no one knew where the tithes and offering money went. Uh, no one could vote things in. It's just his way or the highway. You know what I'm saying? And then... uh uh, stuff like that, right? It's hard to bring scripture to them. And two, I didn't like uh, how the members were, um, they'll cut you off, but they won't cut their mom off. They'll cut this person that's keeping the Sabbath that lost one or two jobs, or this person that they're, they lost their relationship with their kid because they're trying to keep the commandments of the Most High. And they're in the trenches fighting the good fight of faith with you. And you'll cut them off because your temperament but then let your mom do something five times worse, and then you'll still forgive them. But it says, my mothers and my brothers are those who do the will of my father. And that's the thing I couldn't stand with Christian churches, because they will, because you're not their blood, they will quickly cut you off. And if I'm gonna see you in the kingdom, and we're gonna spend eternity, your mom's going to the lake of fire, your cousin, your sister, whoever, right? Brother, grandma, whoever, right? Your children. They're not, they're just dis unbelievers. They're on their way to the lake of fire as if they repent. I'm supposed to spend eternity with you and you cut me off, but you don't cut the sinners off. How do you expect to make it into the kingdom? You literally cut a, one of the Almighty's children off, one of his sons or one of his daughters. If you cut them off because they're in sin, of course. It says don't even eat with them, right? After the second, third admonition, reject. If anyone's called a brother that's a fornicator, you know, a drunkard, whatever, right? That's totally different, right? Because they went back to perdition. But people will cut people off at the Christian church. Mainly when I was a Pentecostal, I've seen it happen all the time. Not really at Trevor's United. But people will cut people off, off of just temperaments. Off of things that's not, oh, you're not a sinner. Maybe they got a disagreement, whatnot. And... If you're in a congregation and you believe that these people are living holy and living righteous and you'll cut off one of his sons or one of his daughters because you guys got in a disagreement, but then you got a sinner husband or a sinner wife or a sinner mom and dad and you guys get in far worse arguments, but you don't cut them off. How are you going to make it into the kingdom? Because you're openly saying, I treat sinners that give you the middle finger every day almighty better than I treat your sons and better than I treat your daughters. I give them more, I am more long suffering and more patience and I give more grace to this sinner than I do your sons and your daughters. You may not say that, but your actions say that, right? So I thank the Almighty because that's the point of growing. You know what I'm saying? That's the point of getting stuff off the stretch. Some things ain't going to feel nice. Some things is going to hurt. Some things is going to catch you off guard. Some things are like, hey bro, I didn't even know. I know one time I said a joke and uh, my brother got offended. And then from then on, I never said any, I don't even participate in that type of uh, entertainment or uh, uh, comedic, hopefully I said it right, um, jokes. 
right? That's just, I just don't go that way. I remember one time I was joking with a, a person about uh, if there was no sugar in Belize. And then they took offense by it. And I was like, hey, my bad. It was a joke. And I apologize. You know, sometimes we offend and we don't know. And sometimes we offend and we're like, man, I was wrong. I should have dealt with that better. But I thank the Almighty for that. How much time we got? So, um, shout out to Demetrius. I'm going to try to link up with him on Zoom. Shout out to Munya B. It's good to see you. Praise the Almighty. What time is it over there, by the way? So, is Sister G up? Is the Sister Whitney up? Maybe their internet's down. But we'll get started. So, this is the last day of Feast of Tabernacles. Thank you, Almighty. It's a nice Sunday. I'm actually able to teach. The first two days, it rained. I was worried about my Bible getting wet and everything. But, I thank the Almighty. Is this music too loud, too, by the way? Might just keep it on. So, give me Mac. I remember that. Oh, um, all right, cool. Oh, there you go. I see you. I see uh, Sister Whitney. I don't see Sister Gia. So, praise the Almighty. Peace of the Tabernacle. Day seven. I will teach on the um the fulfillment of it a little bit how it ties in the days of top uh, feast of trumpets the feast of trumpets some of the scriptures are similar to feast and gathering we're getting in the book true bees not bear with us you hear this every year and i know it becomes repetition and i know you could probably find these scriptures blindfolded but remember we never know what new guests are going on in the service we know the fulfillment of this we know how we keep it. We know how it's a memorial. So I know this service ain't going to be, man, I got so much revelation out of it. It's going to be like, yes, I already known this. I got you. But to the people that don't know Feast of Tabernacles, why we keep the Feast of Tabernacles, Feast of End Gathering, um, and, uh, and what does it symbolize this, and why does it still stand? We're going to get into the book. So last time I taught on the feast, I think it was day one, I hit on the scripture, how all the feasts are forever, and I showed you how we are going to keep it, if you read in Amos, how we're going to keep it, even in the kingdom, when he sets up new heaven, new earth, and new Jerusalem, and when the king will be at Jerusalem, and all nations will have to come on to that, if you didn't see that part, that is in Amos, and also, um, that is in Feast of Tabernacle, day one, praise the Almighty for Brother Vince, teaching the service, I watched all those service uh, on the YouTube Praise the Almighty, Brother Vince. If you didn't see Brother Vince's services, he gave some spiritual nuggets uh, dealing with patience, dealing with people that hate on you, dealing with all these things. So uh, check those out. Those are on the YouTube as well. That's where I've seen it. So with all that said, uh, welcome to True Hebrews United of the Almighty Yeshua. This should be love, holiness, instructor, disciple, true drill instructor. About to get into the book as usual. Uh, let me know if the music's too loud. I'm going to try it with the music this time. Definitely give all praise and honor. To the Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth and all that is in therein, the author and finisher of my faith, the one that governs my heartbeat and my lungs and my immune system, my white blood cells, the ones that uh, decide if I get cancer or I don't, if it decides if I get some rare disease or Crohn's disease or whatever, migraines or whatnot, the one that dictates my health, that out of control, the one that leased me my children because at any time he could take my children at any time he could take my job at any time i could turn on that engine and i blow my engine and i don't have the money to fix the engine or something like that we know how it is when you're being broken when you your pockets are fat i've been where my pockets have been fat and we've been living lavish and i've been where we've been super broke 99 cent store shopping right so the almighty gives us the ability to establish wealth we could do nothing without him we could be nothing without him in the praise and the glory through his son, Yeshua, Amashiach, the only begotten of the Father. Everything we do is through him. He came down, the Almighty manifested in the flesh, gave us an example on how to live and overcome sin, and gave his own life for the sins of the world, right? Those that repent, that is, right? So, if any double honor to the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the teachers, the elders, the bishops, the deacons across the whole planet, teaching and living and persuading people to repent from their sin and come to this gospel, where it's everlasting too late, definitely... Shout out to all the brothers and sisters, keeping the Almighty's commandments, statutes, judgment, precepts, and ways. All the mothers out there holding a the standard, teaching the younger women how to love their children, love their husband, guide the house, being a counselor, not the 50-year-olds still doing the butt pics. 50-year-old, you see a 50-year-old in the bathroom. 
in the bathroom at a restaurant or something. Like, you're 50 years old. You should be sitting down and your grandchildren should come and say, well, how, how do I get a husband? How, how do I be virtue? How do I deal with this guy that says he loves me, but he, he always trying to have sex with me? How to deal with peer pressure? They should be coming to you, Grandma. They should be coming to you, Grandpa, for counsel and knowledge. Not for you to see. Come on now. Come on now. Like, that's that's a, a, a woman that's still trying to stay. Still. You are 50 years old. Quit trying to compete with 20 and 30 year olds. You will lose every time. Stop doing that, right? So all the mothers out there that's really holding the standard of living holy, shout out to you. I appreciate you guys. All the elders are the, uh, out there. It says address them as fathers out there really holding a standard that man, younger man can come to you and ask how to fix a car, how to deal with this, how to fish, how to uh, work on the job, how to deal with some person on the job. I appreciate those people out there. Going real quick, I went to this guy, I seen this guy at the gym. I said, hey man, I'm dealing with this dude on the job. How do I deal with this individual? And I explained the situation and he let me know. He said, watch out. Cause he was a person, he was a Hebrew too. He's like, sometimes they poke the bear because they want a reaction so they could get you fired. It's yes, they know they're scared of you. They are scared of you and they know you could beat them up. They will never meet you after work. But what they want to do is get the satisfaction of you getting fired. So you staying at that company, actually you win. It's a thorn in their side because they have to see you every day and you give them discomfort. And once I say that, and this is a wise, uh, 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 older individual, and no, I'm not asking them things of righteousness and things of the Bible and whatnot, but he was right. And then once I start seeing how people are, all those remote is trying to say, see, 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 hey man, you got to get rid of him. Oh man, oh this, oh he threatened me, oh, right? And so all the mothers out there, all the elders or the fathers out there holding a standard, giving counsel to the people. I appreciate you guys. Uh, all the people on the Facebook and YouTube that share, like, and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. I want you guys to be saved. Please find a congregation. You cannot save yourself. You cannot pick up this Bible and save yourself. You need a congregation. You need to be baptized. Those that believe in is baptized shall be saved. Baptized in the water, in the actual water. And you shall receive the gift of the Ruach HaKadosh, the promise unto you and to your son and all those that are far off and many as the Almighty has called. Save yourselves from this untoward generation. So, Feast the Tabernacle. Turn off the music. There we go. Feast of Tabernacle. Thank you for uh, commenting that because I was asking if it was too loud or whatnot. Uh, uh, Feast of Tabernacle, day seven. So, let's get into the book. Go ahead and turn to Leviticus 23. And what time we got? Hopefully, I didn't go too past. Ooh, I went like 10 minutes past. Point. Praise all my Feast of Tabernacle. Uh, Leviticus. 23 and I do have quite a bit of reading so some of them I'm gonna read fast bear with me because we do got quite a bit of reading so I could deal with certain parts uh, Leviticus 23 verse 33 verse 33 let's get it all right And the Almighty spake unto Moses, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seven months shall be a feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Almighty feast of tabernacles. But I'm, it's also called something else, and I'm going to get with it. I'm going to tie that all in. Unto the Almighty seven days, the first day shall be a holy convocation. You do no silver work therein. Seven days you shall offer an offer made by fire unto the Almighty. And on the eighth day shall be a holy convocation. So technically the feast of tabernacles is over. This is just the eighth day. So the feast of tabernacles ended yesterday at sunset. Now it says, after you kept the feast seven days, the eighth day have the feast. So, yes, I'm saying day eight, but to be technical, it ended uh, yesterday at sunset. You shall, uh, verse uh, 36, seven days you shall uh, offer an offer on, uh, made by the fire unto the Almighty. On the eighth day you shall have a holy, holy convocation unto you. You shall offer an offer made by fire unto the Almighty. It is a solemn assembly. You shall do no server worth therein. So it's a solemn assembly. You need to link up on Zooms. Facebook, you need to assemble with your brothers and sisters at your local congregation, whatever state that is, figure it out. If you got to fly out there, I've flown out to visit my old church um, for the feast days. You got to be there, right? You got to participate. 
you should do no silver work during it's the sabbath no matter what day it falls on wednesday tuesday whatever whatever day that falls on this eighth day is a sabbath unto you do not go to work these are the feasts of the Almighty, which you proclaim to be holy convocations. This is verse 37. To offer an offering made by fire unto the Almighty, a burnt offering, a meat offering, a sacrifice, a drink offering, everything upon his day, besides your Sabbath unto the Almighty, besides your gifts, besides all your vows, besides all your free will offering, which I give unto the Almighty. And on the 15th day of the seventh month, when you shall gather all the fruit of the land, you shall keep the feast of the Almighty seven days. Uh, and on the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day, it sh uh, day it shall be a Sabbath. And you shall take unto you for the first day bros um of uh bros and uh of goodly trees branches of palm trees and bros of thick trees and willows of the brook and you shall rejoice before the lord your yah and you shall keep it a feast unto the almighty seven days in the year shall be a statue forever in all your uh generations you shall celebrate your uh, in the seventh month you shall dwell in booths there we go you shall dwell in booths Seven days, all that an Israelite that shall be born of the land, that your generation may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your Yah, and Moses declared unto the children of Israel all the feasts. So we already know I taught on how to make a booth, what is a booth, all that good stuff, and uh, run from there, getting your palm trees and all. You need to plan ahead too. Don't wait till the last day to do everything because you'll mess up your feast day. You still need to cook too, all the people in that. So remember, next feast day, if you slipped up one, you still need to cook. It's a feast day. It's probably not all the time it lands on a double Sabbath, so you'll be all right. But two, have time to make your your booth, figure out which materials you need. Plan that thing like a week ahead. I'd rather be a year early than a day late. That's the, the same with uh, being a prepper. I'd rather be a year early than a day late. So let's keep going. So Leviticus 23, keeping the feast of the Almighty. Numbers 29. Now I'm going to show you how we kept this and how this is a countdown numbers 29 so i'm gonna if you thought i read fast now i'm gonna read a little bit faster numbers 29 verse 12 all right numbers 29 verse 12 so first i'm gonna read uh, ver uh verse one real quick and then I'm going to read verse 12. On the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no work. It is the blowing of trumpets. More than one trumpets. Remember that. We're going to come to that later on. Now, verse 12. And on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, you shall have a holy convocation. You should do no silver work. You shall keep the feast unto the Almighty seven days. So seven days we keep the feast unto the Almighty. But now check this out. Look at the difference. And you shall offer a uh, you shall offer a burnt offer a sacrifice made by fire for a sweet savior unto the Almighty. Uh, Thirteen young bullocks, two rams, fourteen lambs in the first year, and you shall be without blemish. And the meat offering shall be a fine flour mingled with oil, a tenth deal of every bullock of the thirteen bullocks, two tenth deal of each ram of the two rams, and seven tenth deal of each lamb of fourteen lambs. One kid of goat for a sin offering, besides your continual burnt offering, his meat offering, his drink offering. All right, so thirteen. Now on the second day you shall offer twelve. So the first day was thirteen. Now this is one is twelve. You know, bullocks of two rams, fourteen lambs of the first year without spot, and their meat offering, their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, for the lambs of, uh, uh, shall be according to their numbers after the manner. One kid of goat for the a sin offering, besides your continual burnt offering, the meat offering thereof, and the drink offering. On the third day, uh, eleven bullocks. So you see how this is going down. I'm gonna keep going all the way to the end. 14 lambs of the first year without blemish, their meat offering, their drink offering, the bullocks for the rams and for the lambs according to the number after the manner of one kid of goat for a sin offering, besides your continual burnt offering, his meat offering, and his drink offering. This car made this weird noise, like I don't know what this car was doing. But, anyways. On the fourth day, verse 23, on the fourth day, uh, 10 bullocks, two rams, 14 lambs of the first year without blemish, the meat offering, the drink offering corn, uh, for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs, according to the number after the matter. One kid of goats for the sin offering, besides your continual burnt offering, and meat offering, and his drink offering. On the fifth day, nine bullocks, two rams, for the first, uh, four, uh, 14 lambs in the first year without spot, and the meat offering, the drink offering. For the bullocks and the rams and for the lambs shall be according to the number of the manor. One kid of goats for the sin offering, besides your continual burnt offering and his meat offering and his drink offering. And on the sixth day, eight, 
uh, Bullocks two rams, 14 lambs of the first year without blemish, and their meat offering, their drink offering, the Bullocks for the rams and for the lambs shall be according to the number of the manner of one a goat for a sin offering, besides your continual burnt offerings and meat offering, the drink offering. And on the seventh day, seven Bullocks. Two rams, 14 lambs of the first year without blemish, and their meat offering, their drink offering for the Bullocks and for the rams, the uh, um, and lambs shall be according to the number of their manner. One kid of goats for a sin offering, beside your continual burnt offering, his meat offering, his drink offering. And, um, and on the eighth day, you shall have a soul of a which is today, and you shall do no silver work therein, but you shall offer a burnt offering, a sacrifice made by fire for sweet savor unto the Almighty. One bullock, one ram, seven lambs for the first year without blemish. There shall be a meat offering, drink offering for the bullocks and for the ram and for the lamb, and shall be according to the number after the manner. One can a goat for a sin offering, besides you continue offering for a meat offering and drink offering. These shall be, you shall do unto the Almighty a set feast, besides your vows, your free will offerings, your burnt offerings, for your meat offerings, your drink offerings, for, uh, and, and your drink offerings, and for your peace offerings. And Moses told the children of Israel according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So, we see these uh, seven days. He counts down how many until he gets seven. So it's a countdown, right? So let's keep going. Give me Exodus chapter 34. Exodus chapter 34, then I'll do the shout outs. Exodus chapter 34, verse 21. Six days shall thou work, but the seventh day thou shalt rest. And in, in, in the errand time and in the harvest thou shalt rest. So it says, that it, I don't care if it's harvest and, oh, I need to go out and get harvest and get the, no, nope, you rest. It doesn't matter what time, right? Right here, verse 22. And thou shalt observe the Feast of Weeks, which will be uh, Pentecost, or um, Feast of First Fruits. And it says right here, of the first fruits of, of the wheat offering and the feast of in gathering at the year's end. So what we're in, feast of in gathering. So not only is it called a uh, feast of tabernacle, it's called a feast in gathering. And then not only feast of first fruits, it's also referred to feast of weeks or Pentecost. All right. You follow me with that, right? So go ahead and uh, let me get the shout outs real quick. Shout outs. All right, we got, read the whole thing. We got Vince, Couture, Karen, Guillermo, Sandova, Mira, Geneva, Samuel, Okri, Akan, Eli, Israel, Gia, Jason, Vincent, Izzy, Joshua, Anaya, Kamari, Ariel, Nava, Kashef, Zahara, Zadek, Kassip, Bailey, Raquel White, Manya, Nazabi, Gino, Wright, Christian, Lisa Young, Johnny, Elka Rich, oh, he's on the mic. Um, Johnny, all right. So, um, Killer Jerry Zaman, uh, Jamie Delangelo, Corey Nixon, cooling, cooling. All right, praise Almighty. Hopefully, uh, Johnny comes back. He comes back strong. Let's get it. Let's get it. Um, Matthew chapter nine. Matthew chapter 9. Starting at verse 35. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. Yeshua went about the cities and the village, teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them, and because he fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Then he said unto the disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of harvest that he will send forth labors into his harvest. So we are the fruits. We are the harvest. Feast of end gathering. How does that tie into us? Luke chapter 8. Verse 4. Luke chapter 8 verse 4. And what much people were gathered together, they were come unto him out of every city and spake a parable. Spake by a parable. A sower went out to sow, and he, and he sowed, and some fell on the wayside, and it was trotted down, 
and the fowls of the air devoured it, and some fell on the rock, and as soon as it sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture, and some fell among the thorns and sprang up with it and choked it out, and others fell on good ground and sprang forth and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he, uh, uh, when he ha had said these things, he cried, He that had an ear, let him hear. And the disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said, Unto you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of Almighty, but to other parable, uh, others in parables. As seeing they may not see, and hear they may not understand. Then the parable is this, that the seed is, the seed is the word. Those by the wayside are those that hear, and then, then come the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They that are on the rocks, when they hear, they receive it, and with joy, these have no root. So it refers to you as a plant again, as a harvest. For a while, believe, and in the time of temptation, they fall away. Like the people with uh, uh, straight uh, turn and falling away with, the, with that mandate that you had to get the King Cobra shot. But I'm not going to deal with this right now. And those which fell along the thorns are they which, when they heard, they go forth and, ch uh, and are choked out with the riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. And those on the good ground, which in an honest and good heart, hear, uh, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. So, he says the word goes forth and you bring forth fruit. You are a harvest. So you bring forth fruit with patience. He's expecting a harvest to come. This is when he refers to us, he refers to a harvest. And I got plenty other scriptures, but we're just going to scratch the surface because I try to keep it in time. But as you read the New Testament, all throughout the New Testament, he refers to us as a harvest. He's waiting for the former and latter rain. He's always saying that we are a harvest, right? Or we are fruits, are we, right? So, give me Matthew 13. Now, how does this tie into uh, Feast of Tabernacle or Feast of End Gathering? Matthew 13. Verse 24. Matthew 13, verse 24. And another parable he spoke unto them. Now, I'm going to read this one slow because I want us to pay attention and really get this stuff. Gavin. Shalom, Gavin. All right. Another parable he spake. The kingdom is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in the field. So the word was sowed into the field. But while men slept, the, uh, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. I should have looked up the difference between a wheat and a tear, but maybe I could look that up as a read. So, um, but when the blade was sprung up, he brought forth fruit, and there appeared the tares also. So the servants in the household came and said unto him, Sir, did not you sow the seed in the field? From whence have these tares? And he said unto him, An enemy have done this. And the servant said unto him, Will thou then that we shall gather them up? And, and he said, Nay, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up the wheat also. I'm going to show you something real quick. I should have did this earlier. Let's see if I can find an image. Okay. Oh, this is a perfect one. All right, can you see this? So one is wheat, and one is tares. Now, when they're both green, you cannot tell the difference. It's only until harvest time that the wheat turns brown and the tares stay green. This is why I usually show you the picture that way you can know what he's talking about. One's wheat that will make bread and you can eat and the other one's tares and they look identical. You will only tell until harvest time. So back to 29 verse 13 uh, verse 28 and he said unto them an enemy has done this and the servant said to him will thou then, uh, will thou then that we go and gather them up but he said nay Lest while you gather the tares, you root up the wheat also, because if you root the, you're pulling out the ground, and the, you might pull out the roots of the wheat as well. Let them, let both grow together until harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather first the tares. Obviously, it'll be easy because they're all green, and you don't have to worry about rooting up the wheat because you're gonna 
you're going to uh, harvest that wheat anyways, and then you're going to replow the ground anyways, so you don't care if they're unrooted because you're going to gather the wheat, right? So it doesn't matter. Gather the tares first. So he says, get the sinners first, right? And bind them in bundles and burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. And in, uh, so, verse th 36, And Yeshua sent the multitude away and went into his house, and the disciples came unto him, it says, Declare unto this parable of the tares in the field. And he said unto him, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man, and the field is the world. And the good seed are the children of the kingdom, are the saints of the Most High, the brothers and sisters, the sons and daughters of the Most High, right? It says, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. So there's going to be people in your congregation that's not really living holy, living righteous. And it's just going to be regular atheists and sinners out there, right? The tares of the world. The enemy that sold them is the devil. And the harvest is the end of the world. So we're tying this to feast of in gathering, right? If Christ is our Passover and these feasts need to be fulfilled, he's talking about a harvest at the end of the world. And we keep the feast of in gathering. Let's keep going. Verse 40. No, no. Uh, the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. And th as therefore the tares are gathered and burned in fire, so shall it be at the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of all out of his kingdom all that offend of them which do iniquity, these sinners. And shall cast them into the furnace of fire, and there shall be welling and gnashing of the teeth. Ah, you're going to be so in pain. Ah, ah, or you're just breaking your teeth. You're just gnashing at your teeth because you're in so much pain, right? They used to sometimes when they had to cut people's uh, foot off in World War II or the Civil War, they used to put something so they could bite down because they had to amputate a leg so it didn't kill you. And they don't have no anesthetic back in the day, so you just had to deal with it, right? So let's keep going. I would have just made it like the little head chopper and just quick chop, sewed it off real quick. That's what I would have done, but they, sometimes they had to do it. So anyways, then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun, this is verse 43, in the kingdom of the Father, who have an ear, let him hear. So it says, in the time of harvest, he's going to get these sinners and burn them to destruction. But then after that, the saints of the Most High shall shine forth. So, give me Revelations 14. Verse 1. Revelation 14, verse 1. And I looked, and lo, the Lamb stood on the Mount of Zion, and with them 144,000, having their Father's name written in their foreheads, just like the wicked one's going to have his name on their foreheads and in their right hand, right? And I heard a voice from heaven as a voice of many waters, as a voice of great thunder. And I heard a voice of the harpers harping in the harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before, before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn uh, the song but the 144,000 which were redeemed of the earth. These were the, um, the people that didn't defile themselves with women. So these were eunuchs or virgins. They are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb, whether he goeth. These were redeemed from among men. That's why I don't understand why they keep saying the hundred, only 144 is going to make it into the kingdom. I guess the Jehovah's Witness used to say that, and then they changed their stance because it mathematically doesn't make sense. Because you see in the same book of Revelation, it says, And then i seen a number out of every kind, kindred, tongue, and nation, an uh, uncountable number of people saved. Like they just forgot that scripture, right? So let's keep going. These are the first fruits unto God, unto the Lamb. And in the mouth there were found no guile, for they were without fault before the throne of God. Look at that. Oh, you can't be perfect. And in their mouth there was found for, with no guile, for they were found without fault before the throne of the Most High. Oh, you can't be perfect. Oh, you can't be perfect. Uh, if there was a perfect church, once you step in, now it's not perfect no more. They say all that stupid stuff to justify why they continue to live in sin. But let's keep going. If you wake up in the morning and you did not commit adultery, lie, break the Sabbath, eat pork, you did not commit fornication, you did not use profanity or smoke weed, 
and you woke up and you didn't do these things and then you went to sleep guess what you had you had a perfect day where you did not willfully transgress the commandments of the most high now you might have done things out of ignorance and you say forgive me for the sins i know not of you may not know this whole bible but you mean to tell me every single day, oh, I have to commit fornication. I have to tell a lie. I have to break the Sabbath. I don't know. I just have to put this pork in my mouth. You mean to tell me that? You have to, every 24 hours, you have to sin against the Most High. You sin against, then you are a sinner. Because what is the difference between you and a sinner then? Sinners sin. That's the difference. The saints, we don't sin. But, and if you sin, we dust ourselves off, we repent, and we don't go back to that sin. That's the difference. We're not a sinner. If someone told a lie, and then they stopped lying, they are not a liar. If someone lies and continues to lie, they are a liar. If someone stole one time and stopped stealing, they are not a thief. If someone continues to steal, they are a thief. Sinners, saints. Right? Let's keep going. Verse 6. No, I'm going to read verse 5 again. And in their mouth found no guile, for they were without fault before the Almighty, the throne of the Almighty. Of. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having a, a, the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth and the, to every nation, every kindred, every tongue, and people. Why would they preach that if only 144 could be saved? Well, anyways, let's keep going. Why would they preach that to every nation, kindred, and tongue, and people? For, for what right because the 144 look that's already in a couple of verses earlier right they're already took so what's the point of preaching right because they're only that much going to be saved saying with a loud voice fear god and give glory unto him and the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of the water and there followed another angel said babylon is fallen is fallen the great city because she made all nations to drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and it did that their angel followed, saying with a loud voice, and I wouldn't doubt if part of the Babylon is the IMF, Inter International Monetary Fund, the uh, WEF, uh, World Economic Forum, the Charles Schwab, the One World Government. Yeah, make all the people to drink of that. Let's keep going. Their third angel followed, verse 9, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and, uh, and his image and receive his mark in his forehead and his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Almighty, which should be poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the heavenly, heavenly angels and the presence of the almighty this is why they're going to come a time where we can't save no one where he's going to say no again in the ark these people have the mark there's nothing you'll be able to do they're dead man walking they are zombies there's going to come a time where you will not it's almost let's just say hypothetically the mandate of the king cobra bite in your shoulder that they had for this pandemic right Let's just say that was the mark. I'm not saying that is the mark. These There's nothing you could do for them. Their DNA has changed. There's nothing you could do for them. They are beyond redemption. We are not the light to them. We are not the salt of the earth to them. There is nothing we could do or teach them for, for them to make it into the kingdom. It is a lost cause, right? So there's going to come a time where say, when that happens, where we just need to focus on the people that are saved. Let's keep going. Verse 11, and the smoke of their uh, torment ascended up forever and ever, and they had no rest day or night uh, who worshiped the beast and his image and whoever received the mark in his name. Here is patience uh, of the saints. Uh, here are they that keep the commandments of the Most High in faith of Yeshua. Yeshua, right? This is, this is patience. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, uh, blessed are the dead which die in the Almighty from henceforth. Because it says that some of us will die during this time. Yea, this, uh, this uh, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Their righteous works, and them living righteous and holy, their works are going to follow them in the day of judgment. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud. Now pay attention. And upon the cloud was one that sat on, uh, like unto the Son of Man having in his hand a golden crown head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle uh oh let's see what a sickle is i screenshot this for you guys by the way let's see what a sickle is there we go 
kind of like that little grim reaper thing that's a sickle so when the wheat comes up you use the sickle and you cut it down and then you gather the wheat into your barn you put it in little bales or whatnot and you gather the wheat right and he had a sharp sickle and another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice unto him that sat on the cloud thrust the sickle and reap for the time is come for thee to reap for the harvest of the earth is ripe. now we remember we just read in Matthew it says and the harvest is the end of the world so now this angel is saying it's time to reap now remember in the parable he used he dealt with in Matthew 13 it says get the tares first and burn them then the children the seed of, of the father will shine forth right and, and verse 16, and he that sat on the cloud thrust his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, having, all, having also, uh, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him with that had the sh sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the cr clusters of the vine of the earth for the grapes are fully ripe and the angel of his sick or the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great wine press of the raft of the almighty he's going to get these sinners first check this out and the wine press was trotted down without the city, and the blood came out of the wine press even unto the horse's bridle by the space of a thousand six hundred and six hundred furlongs. Now verse fifteen. And and I saw another angel, another sign in heaven, a great marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them were filled with the wrath of the Almighty. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire of them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand onto the sea of glass having the harps of god of the almighty right the seed of the righteous is going to shine forth he's going to gather there will be an end gathering we're keeping this they kept the passover and yes the almighty passed over them in egypt they kept the passover but that symbolizes our Mashiach coming to be our Passover. We keep Feast of End Gathering, our Feast of Tabernacle, because he hasn't gathered, he hasn't reaped this world yet. That has not been fulfilled. And so we still keep it. And even after, if you read in Amos, you're going to keep it even once you get into the kingdom. We are waiting for the Almighty to come and gather us up. But let's keep going. First Thessalonians chapter 4 starting at verse 13 first Thessalonians chapter 4 starting at verse 13 but I would have you not be ignorant brethren don't be ignorant concerning them that which are asleep that means they're dead and sorrow not even as others which have no hope for if we believe that Yeshua died and rose again, even so them which also sleep in Yeshua Messiah would bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Almighty, that they which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Almighty shall not prevent them which are asleep. Now remember when he saw, he saw a man on a cloud like the son of the Almighty having a crown on his head and having a sickle? That's the coming of the Most High. He's about to reap these people, right? So he's talking about the same thing we just read in Revelation. That believe uh, so even so him which sleep in Yeshua will uh, Yeshua will God bring with him for this we say unto you by the word of the Almighty that they which are alive and remain at the coming of the Almighty shall not prevent them that are asleep for the Almighty himself shall descend like we said the king came on a cloud from heaven with a shout and we heard that in Revelation there was a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of the Almighty and the dead and Amashiach shall rise first 
Then they which were alive there shall remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall it ever be on the Almighty. Wherefore come for one another with these words. So we see in the feast of trumpets which we keep, he's blowing these trumpets, and these trumpets are a countdown, as well as Feast of In Gathering is a countdown. Now, at the sound of the last trump, we will be caught up. But that's also a woe, which we read in Feast of Trumpet. It says, woe, woe, woe to the last three. At that time, there will also be a destruction to this world. He's going to wreak these people when he blows that trumpet and send these plagues. And we are going to be caught with the Most High. And no, I'm not saying there's no rapture or none of that stuff. We're going to be here for all that but the last trumpet. Go ahead and give me uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Because a lot of us will die for his namesake. It's already prophesy someone will fulfill that we don't know who will but hundreds or thousands of us that believe in the almighty when these days come it's going to be a day of reckoning we're going to have to go to the highway to the wilderness we have to be as pilgrims like it said right first corinthians chapter 15 I'm more comfortable now i got my bible back Way easier to find my scriptures. Verse 51. Let's get it. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We should not all sleep. Once again, he's saying again, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkle of the eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, like we kept Feast of Trumpets, at the last trump. And there were seven trumpets, and the Feast of Tabernacle was seven days. So it could be just like Passover and Feast of Leveret happened at the same time back to back. Blowing the trumpets and Feast of Tabernacle will happen simultaneously. Because these trumpets are going to just be sound, and there's a countdown going for the Feast of Tabernacle to end gathering. Let's keep going. And the dead shall rise incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For a corrupt, corruptible must put on incorruptible, and the mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then it shall be brought to pass, saying, that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting in grave? Where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Because the law described what sin is. We did not know sin uh, 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 but, but we did not know sin if not but by the law. When you see a tribe, like I was talking to a sister about culture and stuff, you see a tribe in um I forgot where they at, but they eat their dead descendants' brains. And because of that, a lot of them have this disease you only get from eating brains, right? So they don't think it's a sin. So when we come and we bring the biblical culture to them. Hey, this is wrong. Oh, you know, I've been doing this. I know you've been doing this for a while, but the biblical culture said this is wrong. You can't be eating people's brains, all right? You know what I'm saying? So you can look that up. There's a trial. I think they stopped doing it. I don't know if they're still doing it, but like half their half their uh, population has this disease. It's because you're eating brains. But let's keep going. So we did not know sin until law came, right? And the us breaking the law, it says the soul that sinned shall surely die. So death came in once the law came in. That's why the law they said was made death unto us, because now you have the knowledge of sin. I, if if my son chose to, he's at his age chose to poop in his pants just so he could play outside and continue to play soccer, he will be in trouble. I will deal with him accordingly, because you are too old. To poop. If I say, why'd you poop in your pants? What, it just came, you ate something bad? No, nah, I just, just didn't want to go to the bathroom. I just wanted to keep playing soccer. Yes, I would deal with him. Because you're too old. You know better. So it will be a sin to you. Not a literally sin, biblical sin. But the law came. Now, before they know that it's wrong, like a babe that doesn't know right and wrong, it's not a sin. But once the law comes, hey, you're wrong for that, right? Once knowledge comes, it can become sin. O oh, death, where is thy sting, and O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the, and the strength of sin is the law. But I thank the, uh, be to the Almighty, which giveth us up the victory through the Lord, Yeshua, Amashiach. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, um, always abounding in the work of the Almighty, for as so much we know that your labor is not in vain. And I like this scripture too, because sometimes you preach, you preach, you preach, and these people aren't feeling the word. Like you're trying to, you want people to be saved, you want people to get the light, and they just don't get it. It's just the pool of still smoking weed or the pool of fornication. There's always this pool that's always pulling them back. 
And then there's fault finders, people that no matter what you do, they're going to, oh, see, see, oh, you know, they just want to find reasons not to come. They want to find reasons not to repent. And their own life is condemned only to their own destruction because in the end they can't save themselves anyways. So, but let's get some honorable mentions. And I got this from this sister, uh, sister Whitney shared this. It's an honorable mention of the Feast of Tabernacles. Go ahead and give me, um, Joshua chapter six. Joshua chapter six. No, she did not teach this to me. But she brought this to light. And that's why I like that there's more than one part of the body. Right? Tomorrow I'll be teaching on... Putting the, correction, the congregation in order. I'm going to read a message that someone sent me. And uh, she was very respectful. And hopefully all the people that watch this that disagree with me, please tag them. Because we're going to open up the scripture. And we're going to see how they feel and their opinions and their thoughts. Versus and compare that to what the scripture says. So, let's get with it. Uh, Joshua chapter 6, starting at verse 1. This is when Joshua first came into, they split the Jordan. They're coming into the land. This is the first city they went to go take. This is after Moses died. He, he put Moses, laid hands. Joshua is in charge. And he split the Jordan just like Moses split the Red Sea. Joshua split the, uh, uh, the Jordan and went across. Uh, now Jericho was straightly shut up because the children of Israel. And none went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given in thy hand Jericho and the kingdom. And the mighty men of valor, you shall compass the city, all you men of war that shall go round about the city, thus shall you do six days. The se a seven priests shall bear the uh, before the ark seven trumpets and ram's horns, and then on the seventh day, keep going, right? Seventh day you shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow it with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass when you shall make a long blast with the ram's horn and when you shall heard the sound of the trumpet, all the people who will shout with, uh, with a great shout and the wall of the city shall fall down flat and the people shall ascend uh, every man straightway before. So the last day there should be a great shout. In Revelations chapter 13, it says in the, there is a great shout before the angel of the almighty when they thrust that sickle, right? Let's keep, let's keep going. Take up the Ark of the Covenant and let the seven priests bear the seven trumpets and the rams and the horns by the ark of the almighty and he said unto the people pass on come past the city and let them that is armed pass on before the ark of the almighty and it come to pass when joshua has spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets and the horns pass on before the almighty and blew the trumpets of the ark of the covenant of the Lord almighty followed them and the armed man went before the priests and blew the trumpets and the re reward came after the ark and the priests going up and blowing the trumpets and Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day that I bid you to shout, then shall you shout. So the ark of the Almighty compassed the city, going about, the, uh, one, uh, about it once, and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark, and the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets and the ram's horn before the ark of the Almighty, and went continuously, and blew the trumpets, and the arm went before them, and the reward came after the ark of the Almighty and the priests going out and blowing the trumpets. And the second day they compassed the city once and they returned into the camp. So they did six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day, they rose up early about the dawn of the day and they compassed the city about the same manner seven times. Only on the seventh day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass in the seventh time when the priests blew the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, shout for the Lord Almighty has given given you the city and this and the city shall be a curse even it and all that are therein unto the almighty only Rachel the herald shall live and they shall all that are in her house because she had hit the messengers we're going to go verse 20 and so the people shouted and the police blew the trumpets and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet that the people shouted with a great shout and the wall fell down flat so the people went up into the city every man straight before him and they took the city right so, uh, seven days, they blew a trumpet every day, but the last day they blew, they blew it seven times. Now, this was the first day of their inheritance. 
our inheritance is eternal life. But that that uh, shout and that tr seven trumpets being blown, that was the day of their judgment and their destruction. So this was our inheritance the first day because they came across the Jordan, but they didn't inherit any land. They didn't get their inheritance, and this was the first city they took. So this day was the day of their inheritance, and it was also the day of someone's destruction. And when he blows that last trumpet, and when he reaps that sickle, it's going to be destruction, the wrath of the winepress of the wrath of the Almighty to them, but it's going to be our salvation for us. So, also too, there is a city, Jericho, you could go back to the city, Jericho, and these people uh, went and investigated, and they seen this part of the wall of Jericho, and they s looked at how this wall, they assumed it's Jericho, how it, a part of the wall were, fell in, and how the wall is structured, and it said it looked like how the wall fell in, it fell in like a ramp. Like most walls don't crumble that way, so where Israel could come in. Now, how legit that is, you know, I don't know if they're an archaeologist or whatever like that, right? But it's interesting. They found uh, places they believe that's the Sodom and Gomorrah, and they found little sulfur rocks like fire and brimstone coming down, all scattered throughout that destroyed city. So the, the Almighty leaves witnesses. He's never left without a witness. He's never left without a witness. The Smithonians. And histor uh, uh, how do you say that? Historians? That's not how you say it. They cover that up. They cover that up. So, with all that said being done, you can... That's right. You can go every day without you on the spouse, but you can't uh, without you on all money. So, with all that said being done, keep standing. Don't drop standards. We have uh, service tomorrow. It's a double Sabbath. So you know don't work today, don't work tomorrow, double Sabbath be tough, be tough, but praise the Almighty, we'll have service tomorrow, it'll be definitely edif uh, edifying service, stay tuned, shalom, keep standing, don't drop standards.